Andrew, the bomb will be free now, Andrew. Mm -hmm. I told you not to have that during that night. Well, thank you, but I'm feeling a whole lot better now. I might even try for some lunch now. Oh, there is just one bloke who's been waiting for a while. Edwin Corbett. Yeah, old boy. Off legs. There again, it is Caribbean day at the canteen. I suppose he won't take long. Edwin Corbett. Ted. Good morning, Ted. I'm Dr. Colin. Your family doctor mentioned you'd had a fall. Oh, I just went over. Oh, no damage, touch wood. Well, before you fell, was there any chest pain or palpitations, shortness of breath? No, I've just been uh, a bit unsteady on my feet lately. What, your legs have felt weak? So, yes, that's right. Have you seen anyone about it? I mean, the doctor had got me an outpatient's appointment. And when was that for? Year 2000, I think. Sounds about right. Well, listen, we're chock a block here at the moment. Do you mind if I take a quick look at you here? Oh, no, go straight ahead. Okay. You had any nausea, drowsiness, fits, faints, blurred vision? Okay, I'm just going to see how stiff and loose your legs are, okay? Okay, keep your knee bent, don't let me straighten your leg. Okay, now keep it straight, keep it straight. Okay, and same again, don't let me straighten it. Keep it straight. Right, we're just going to do some uh, reflexes then, okay? Alrighty. You feel a little scratch in the bottom of your foot. You um, had any problems with your waterworks? Sorry to have to ask you, it's very important. Have you uh, lost control of your water? Oh, just, just these last couple of days. I mm. thought perhaps it was an infection or something. Any serious illness in the past? No. My appendix when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. and pneumonia in the army. Andrew, I think you've got an MI. I'm taking him through. Okay, you just relax there, Ted. I'll be with you very shortly. Um, could you please Liz Reed to see Ted Corbett and do some bloods? Thanks. I think we've got a cord compression there, Pat. You in any pain now, sir? It's Mr O'Neill. Mr O'Neill. It's getting easier. Is it in the middle of your chest? Oh, like someone's sitting on me. You've been reading the textbooks, haven't you? You want some on oxygen? Yeah, 35%, please, and aspirin too. So your heart tracing suggests that you have had a heart attack, OK? So we're going to arrange a transfer to coronary care where we can start treatment to dissolve the blood clot that's caused it, OK? We'll be back with you very soon, Mr O'Neill. 35% oxygen, OK? Let's uh, get hold of CC and you, see if we can make a bed for him. He should be strapped as soon as possible. I'll do my best. Thank you. How are you doing, Liz? Fine. Ted, I'm going to do some blood tests and some x-rays. I'm worried that your legs are weak because there's some uh, pressure on your spinal cord. Right? Sure, yes. Well, we need to release that pressure to avoid permanent damage. What sort of damage? It's a little bit early to Andrew. say. Won't be a minute, OK. FBCs, UNDs, LFTs, calcium profile, electrophoresis, uh, B12, folate and ESR. Chest and spinal films too. Start from this once and talk to the referring doctor. I'm only the wazak in charge of the busiest department in this hospital. This is Dr. Colin. Hi, uh, yeah. Could we get him up there as soon as possible, please? Well, I'd rather not keep him waiting. The sooner we treat, the better his chances. Fine, thank you. Damn it. Any chance of him being strapped down here? No, I don't like it. It's not policy. What's the big issue? Complications during thrombosis. Well, the guidelines say it must be done in coronary. Where there are no beds. Those bloods are urgent, yeah? Can you get them done? Ted, the operation you need to relieve the pressure in your spinal cord requires specialised surgery, OK? So I'm going to refer you to another hospital. What, today? Straight away. Um, Patrick, could you see which neurosurgical unit's got a bed for Mr Corbett? Right. I'm going to go to the... Um... We won't be long, Ted, all right? We'll be close very you, soon. You, I'm holding. Dr Colin. It's me. Alison. This could not be a worse time, honestly. Patrick, you know I'm worried. Sick. Look, I'll call you later, okay? Bye. Sorry, Andrew. Dr. Come Colin? All oh, right, yeah. Yes, Can you transfer me to the switchboard at the general, please? Switchboard. Hi, yeah. Uh, this is Dr. Colin, medical SHO at Fort Apache. Could you bleep the uh, neurological surgeon on the call, please? Yes, you could use some urgent urea, electrolytes, liver function, and calcium profile. Electrophoresis. Oh, and electrophoresis. Biochemistry's machines. Ah, oh, so. Okay. Sorry, people, this patient's one of yours. Could you see her, please? Well, Dr. Turner will go spare, not having me on the walks. Well, Dr. Turner will just have to have you somewhere else. Go on, Andrew. Be a oh, sweetie. Mr. Ray, yeah, this is Dr. Colin. Yeah, I have a 71 year old uh, spastic paraparesis, clinically highly suspicious of cord compression. Really? Do you know anywhere he does? Uh, take your pick. OK, right. Thanks for your time. No room at the inn, Ted. But don't worry, we'll have to wait from here as soon as possible. Okay? Don't you worry, Doctor. Andrew! What? His heart's going ten to the dozen. Yeah, your heart's just got a little bit enthusiastic, mm. so that's box standard SVT. Can I have... Uh... The dentist three milligrams per mil. I want a verapamil. What? Kidding. This may feel a little bit funny, sir. Like you. 
Can you uh, contact the bed manager, Pat? See if we can get her in on a CCU right away. Sure. And the on call administrator? It's got to be a neurosurgical bed somewhere up there. You'll be lucky. I know. Ah. Is that better, sir? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, excuse me a minute, Mr. O'Neill. I just want to know about a domiciliary visit. Yeah. How should that self get so bad? I've no idea. This is Ivy. Ivy, uh, one of my regulars. Thanks, Rob. Right. It's only been two weeks since we saw you, Ivy. Can we get him into a cubicle? Well, they're all blocked. I'll make the gentleman out of the court. Thanks. You're just to get in. Don't worry, Ivy. You're going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get some oxygen going, please. Six per minute. Yeah, and some gases off straight away. <laughs> Uh, five mils of salbutamol nebulized over air, 200 milligrams of hydrocortisone, IV. IV, are you allergic to penicillin? And 500 milligrams of amyloxidin straight away, please. IV, this is one of our new doctors, Dr. Reed. She is very silent. It's the usual story, wheezing and coughing up sputum. Okay, are you any chest pain? I'll get this to the lab. The machines are down, you said, run out to ITU. Go on. The bed manager's not answering the bleep. Doesn't make much odds. She couldn't find a bed in the bed shop. What about the on call admin? She said she was coming down. I believe that when I see it. Listen, I think we should go for Amanoflin right away. Mm. All right. <laughs> Outside call. Call me, Ivy. Listen, Ivy, you know me. I'm not going to beat about the bush. You're looking very ill. If your heart stops, do you want us to? I'm sorry, was that a loading dose you wanted? I'll put out the arrest call. No, no, no. Anybody with her? Daughter. Okay. Can you, um... Any joy yet, Doctor? With you in a minute, Ted. You're Ivy Stoker, aren't you? Remember me, Dr. Corn? As you know, your mother had a very serious, long-standing chest disease, and I'm afraid this time, um, it was just too much for her. She, uh, she passed away a few moments ago. No, I'm sorry, love. Not that... I thought Liz was looking after this one. So did I. I'm, I'm really very sorry. Could you look? Thanks. Come on, Mr. Cole. Dr. Colin. Ah, oh, oh, Dr. Colin. No, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Colin. I have a young lady with a swollen leg. I think it's a DVT. Well, what makes you think it's a DVT? I've been a GP for 30 years. I don't know. Oh, Andrew! Look, just send her up. I can't be bothering arguing with you. Uh, Dazimals, please. Have you got a patient for Lectomore? It's not this one, mate. Can I have a pillow? VO2, 4.5. Where's Liz? Well, she had some stuff to do, so she asked me to go to ICU for her. PCO2, 9.1. Uh, she's dead, Rob. Ivy's dead. Sorry, gasping for a cuppa. Such a queue at the canteen. Oh, that'd be on account of Caribbean, Dad. Can you get some oxygen, please, Liz? You've got those Dazimals? Thanks. You know that old chap, yeah. Ted Corbett? This GP books him an outpatient appointment instead of sending him in as an emergency. Now that stuffed shirt curry is on at me about a DVT of all things. Can you keep Can I make myself useful? Please. That's no all good. Right. Watch yourselves. Hang on, Doc. I'm going for it. All right. Good. OK. There you go. That'll do it. Whew. Well done. You can get up now. What's your name? Mustafa. Well, thanks, Mustafa. I can't get up, Doc. I think they've put me back out again. Hey. Oh, come on, help him up. Oh, no, no, he can help. One, two, nice three. three. Whoa, 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 I don't know what to do. Look, uh, Mustafa, um, <sighs> take your time, will you? I'm up for rushing. Ted. Oh, I think you'll never do that, should you? Uh, don't worry about it, Ted. It could happen to anybody, honestly. All right. Um, I'll get someone to clean you up. Ted, don't worry. OK? <laughs> Patrick. Sorry, yeah, Ted Corbett's wet himself. Well, didn't he have a bottle? I don't know. Well, you knew he was incontinent. Didn't you make sure he got I one? I forgot. Oh, sorted. Um, no joy with getting uh, Mr uh, O'Neill to CCU, is there? Correct. Get in there! Oh, Rob. Um, oh, could you please get on with the rest of the 